All right, guys. Uh, yesterday we did the George is not found tickle monster drama, and you know if you want to watch that, be my guest. I'm not qualifying everything I said. That was quite a journey. Things are getting pretty crazy on the internet with uh, people's <sighs> situations. Anyway, there's apparently another one, the puns drama. I don't know who that is. It's another pretty big, my understanding, a Minecraft YouTuber. Ooh, something about these Minecrafters, guys. I wonder, I mean, I wonder, I just wonder what it is. There's got to be something about the oil. Well, first of all, I don't know what this guy did. Maybe he actually did something wrong. But, you know, it feels like it's a 50-50 shot of it actually being something wrong or not being something wrong. This guy's always, I don't know if he does Minecraft. Oh, he does. I'm just a gamer. Why do these people, like, don't post for, like, six months and then they get exposed? What is happening? Um, I wonder... If part of it is just the... Oh, he streamed five days ago. If part of it's just people being sensitive, I, I don't know, in their audience. Who knows? But anyway, we got this bull box video we're going to engage with. Or he's just going to read it to us because I'm an old man. Um, so let's get this party started. Another Minecraft creator is embroiled in controversy, oh, this no. time being the Twitch streamer Puns, who ironically called out Wilbur Suit for having a poor response to his allegations. So let's see how he did with response. That's funny. Um, I'll put my Wilbur Suit thing in there too, but I felt like that was a bit over inflamed too. Seems like he wasn't a particularly good guy, but it went like way too far with like how disproportionate the labeling of him was. In my opinion, I'll just put my video. You can go watch. I don't feel like qualifying everything I say. Like you can go watch it if you don't want to watch it. Then like you don't care enough about my perspective to care to actually like engage. Responding to his own. But first, we have to see what the initial allegations actually are. But before that, I have to talk about the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. We all need to eat, but sometimes we don't have the money. I probably I probably don't need to eat for a little while. Or the time to eat in a way that we should, which is why I'm so glad HelloFresh exists. Hey guys, HelloFresh here. I'm gonna put this on the screen, and if you could pause it if you want, and you can go and use the thing here you can go use there's a there's a thing <laughs> can't get myself out of the way here you can use the qr code i'll give you a second to do that and uh i'm gonna skip to the end but hello fresh uh code word bow black i don't know go to his description if you're gonna use that food stuff i don't know or just go to costco that's another good idea you could do that too just eat everything from costco also his little thing here subscribe button's kind of in the way kind of Makes it difficult to look at. They are America's number one meal kit that delivers <laughs> feel, the exact amount. I feel like this little icon will make it difficult. You probably should have put this in the, to the, the top corner, but Plex. <laughs> right? The ingredients you need and the like, instructions you need in order to. I feel like that gets in the way of the QR code. That probably doesn't help. So you probably need to yourself on that. Cook quality. Make sure to right, 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 ship. Here we go. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video, but for now, let's get back to it. So Andy VMG posts the allegations on her Tumblr with the title, My Experience mm. with Luke Puns. I feel like I haven't seen a single gay guy come forward about this type of stuff, so maybe people should just start being gay, because apparently when two dudes are doing it, they don't have these problems. So I'm just saying. Content warning, toxic relationship, racism, dubious consent. I know in the past... Last I said I would racism no longer speak about him publicly and when talking about my experiences with abuse and emotional mistreatment I begged to keep it anonymous but after reflecting on this for a week and seeing so many incredibly smart and strong women tell their stories they have given me the strength to say his name this is really scary to talk about because of the copious levels of harassment I have received from his fans in the past so it all right listen I'm gonna just be clear here when it comes to your fans I think there's a level of responsibility you should take for how obnoxious your fans are um, if they're being annoying you should be like hey don't be annoying no more but there's only so much that you could really do. So him having a large audience and having fans that are, you know, crazy. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I don't know if I care that much. If this spreads or gets out of hand, I will simply log off. If you read my last post, I nicknamed him one. So aside from everything I said there, there were a lot of things I didn't include because it would have made it obvious that it was him and could potentially backfire on me. So I'm very afraid to post this, but I'm going to do it scared anyway, because it's not fair that he gets to just go on and live his life. Well, I mean, the reaction that people got from the Wilbur suit thing and even the George is not found, despite the fact that that was nothing but tickling. Um, where it was pretty much showed that she at least lied about the narrative of like her not being interested in, in him, even though they had some mutual flirting going on. It seems like there's honestly too much comfortability that just show that just empowers people to come forward with like potentially false things. I'm not saying this is. I'm not saying that this is. We're gonna listen to it still, but like obviously that's what sets the tone. It's like I feel brave enough to come forward. It's like yeah, because the atmosphere that you're in is not <laughs> critical at all. They don't even think critically about anything. Life worry free, as if he didn't practically ruin mine. Because I already oh, made a lengthy geez. post about him, I won't include everything I said last time to avoid being redundant. But if I repeat oh, myself, please bear with me. In our year long relationship, I had to endure emotional neglect, gaslighting, verbal abuse, okay. one instance where there was dubious consent, and 
one in what does that even mean? You're date okay. Let's Much more. Starting off at the beginning of our relationship. That's when <laughs> I was getting copious amounts of hate and harassment from his fan base, warranted Fire. or not. He decided that our relationship Warranted or not? Why would you say that? If it's warranted, then who cares? It must be kept private. He said it was to protect me from his fan base. Whatever. Who cares? When in reality, it was to protect himself. It was so we wouldn't get all the backlash I was getting. This is funny because one of the things- Oh, so I don't know who this person is. It sounds like they were getting a lot of backlash and this guy didn't want people to know that they were dating. Okay. I mean, that's a coward move from him, but you decided to go along with it, so I don't care. Things I got called out for was saying the B-slur derogatory term. What is the B-slur? Bitch? Booty? Ball sack? Bananas? What is, what is the B-slur? used against Mexicans slash Latinos. I won't get into- Oh! <laughs> well, that's a little rough, girl. What are you doing? Okay, so she said some racist stuff to Hispanic people. All right. The nuances of it. Why would he want to attach himself to your fucking racism with it? If I could say it or not as a Puerto Rican, because that's discourse that does not pertain to this specific situation. Why do you want to say a slur? <laughs> Okay. But you also, and this is just me relaying information, a lot of Hispanic people don't particularly care for um, Puerto Rican people. That's from what I've heard. I've talked a lot of like Salvadorians and stuff because uh, they feel like Puerto Rican people uh, feel more entitled to be here since like Puerto Rico is like a territory of the United States. Um, that's not, I have no dog in the race on that one. I'm just telling you what I've heard some people say. It's an interesting thing. Either way, you shouldn't be saying slurs. All right. All right. There, there's no A at the end of that word, okay? It's not like cracker. You could say that because there's an A on it. It means friend. <laughs> you can't say it with an, a hard R because that's derogatory. You know who definitely can't say it? A white boy from Massachusetts. Uh, when I was oh, I can say it. Getting canceled for this and getting thousands of tweets calling me names, he decided it was a perfect time to say, I mean, you are a B, aren't you? My little B. Now he said... I don't care. It's in private. Like, if you, you probably weren't offended by it at the time. I, I really... The, Okay. This completely unprompted. I was in the process of- like You shouldn't say slurs in private, but also, like, I don't really care. You guys were dating. It's, if you didn't like it, set the boundary. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, <laughs> I don't care. I writing mean. my apology, and he just said that. I can tell you this because I immediately shut him down and told him that- Oh, there you go. So you stood up for yourself. Cool. That there was no universe in which it was okay for him to say that word. And oh, especially great. not you one where he could yourself. just call me that. While I was reprimanding him, he was smiling and laughing. He apparently found it amusing to call me a slur. Reg Should have broke up with him at that point if he had a big problem with it. Regardless, he gave me a half-assed apology and said he wouldn't do it again, and he didn't. But this was- Oh, okay. Then I don't care. The only time he was weirdly racist to me. This was my first time being in an interracial relationship, so I was led to believe this- <laughs> What's this person look like? I'm just curious. Their racial relationship. Okay. It just kind of. I, and listen, I could be wrong. I just, I'm getting the energy that this person really. Um, <laughs> okay, they take their identity. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I feel like they put too much value into their identity. Like I, I, I like I have Hispanic friends and stuff, and they're Hispanic, but they don't. I don't know. I, whatever. I'm, let's just keep going. This I'm, was normal I'm, by I'm, all the white people. I'm around. focusing on things that don't matter. My bad. On me at the time, but sometimes my Spanish accent would come out, and he would make fun <clears> of me in the way I pronounce some words. I just know that like a lot of white passing and mixed people um, are very self conscious about or their identity sometimes because they feel. Like, you know, people in their own community will kind of almost ostracize them out of that community. Um, so there's like an identity struggle there. So he also refused to visit me in Puerto Rico when I she's definitely a white Hispanic person though. live there or come meet my family when I really wanted him to because <laughs> he didn't like the heat or it's dangerous there, isn't it? This. Once, while we were watching season two of Bridgerton, he <laughs> he's kind of dangerous, no? Implied that the Sharma sisters are too dark for him to be attracted to them. This hurt me uh, because they are brown-skinned girls. I am a brown-skinned girl. You're a very white, white-passing person. Girl. Then this come Thank you for the two dollars from Pop. Some hundred forty-two to me, Papa. I'm a Sigma. You're the Beta Wojak. What the fuck is a Wojak? And with the fact that he told me once he wasn't attracted to me, made me feel like my skin color was unattractive. The then you should just not date him anymore. These are only a few examples I can think of at the moment, but I'm sure there were more. Our relationship ended in 2022, so some of my memory is a bit hazy. But I do okay. remember feeling inferior to him throughout the relationship. I mean, it's listen. It's normal to go into a relationship and it being very toxic because I've been in one before where I haven't acted responsibly, and the person I with didn't, uh, person I was with didn't either. And then after it's over, you sit back and you reflect and things start to feel worse than they actually did like during the time it was happening. You know, you start remembering specific events, but you remember more how you felt. You start filtering it through how you felt now. And sure, that's why I take a lot of these like this was my past um, with a grain of salt because like it's just the way people tend to filter 
you know, information that happens through like a bad relationship. Like I was in a very toxic relationship, you know, some with somebody who like wouldn't work, refused to work and would steal money from me. And it's like, I don't know. It sucks, but it is what it is. I'm sure I did bad things too. I just didn't internalize those as much because it was me. Right. And you sometimes will feel valid in your inappropriate behavior. Um, not even necessarily on purpose, just because, you know, you're like, well, I can, I'm justified in doing X, Y, Z, you know? So I don't know. Because he was white and I was not. I chalked that up to all the <sighs> microaggressions I had to deal with because I had never felt that way around white people before. Another thing I had to endure was him constantly making me feel like he was embarrassed to be with me. Because I was cancelled, he didn't want to associate with me too much. He did- So you shouldn't have dated him. And, okay. He defend me on multiple occasions, I'll give him that. But he only did- Oh, if he defended you then, who cares? It because his name was getting dragged in the mud along with mine. Excusing my actions made him look better for being around me. In reality, he didn't really care. Be it sounds like she's mostly upset with the fact that they as creators- And there could still be other stuff, like that's real later, so- you know just excuse me but it sounds mostly like there the issue that she had is he didn't really defend him enough as a creator or she he didn't defend her enough as a creator it seems like she has a big sticking point with that because he was such a big content creator and someone i looked up to professionally i took his advice cool. as law he told me to tone down my personality to keep a low profile to change things about myself to be more palatable to his audience the same audience like saying slurs yeah probably a good advice <laughs> that spoke about me like the pussy can't be that good puns please stop defending her so Got i changed him. a lot of things about myself and my content to better suit what his audience liked he made me feel like if his audience liked it wasn't just his audience so very clearly it seemed like you were getting backlash from multiple audiences so you changed yourself to be more palatable in general because you wanted to maintain be a content creator i just don't like the suggestion that you like changed yourself for him because you didn't you changed yourself because you wanted to maintain uh being a content creator and you wanted you, you wanted like the privileges that come along with that which is usually like easy work and playing fucking video games or doing something easy all day like i'm doing right now like me he would be public about our relationship and stop hiding it he told me the reason why he wanted to keep our relationship a secret was because he didn't want to get hate for it but this wasn't okay. true on my 20th birthday he went to las vegas for a twitch rivals event that night i asked to facetime with him to say good night and he refused <laughs> because he was at a hotel room with his friends and didn't want them to know that we were together it was as if my mere presence or the utterance of my name was a source of embarrassment for him and yeah. he didn't let me forget it it was so then why the fuck did you date him? Like, you, you, I don't know, there was a lot of heat on you for a seemingly stupid reason, and he, and he was embarrassed to be with you, and you dealt with it. Like, you grow up, and, like, you should have broke up with him sooner. I don't know, like, I'm kind of tired of people, like, not setting firm boundaries. I'm not gonna lie, like, I've been in a relationship where, like, I was kind of afraid to break up, too, so maybe part of this is me projecting, but it's like, you know, we gotta get to a point where you're just like, okay, then leave him if you don't feel like he's respecting you. All right, but if you're getting a significant amount of backlash, you know you probably understood why at the time. And you're dating a content creator, and it comes with the it comes with the territory because it could have a negative impact on his career. So, I mean, you under, you were a creator too. You understand the landscape of what's going to go on, so. It wasn't just a public thing at that point. He didn't want people to know we were together, period. This was devastating to me because I would talk to all my friends about Yeah, because then they could potentially tell people and be like, oh, he's dating such and such. Him. I was so proud to be with him and was- He's dating this half-white woman. Just one more problem to him. He made me feel so small and insignificant just because his fans didn't like me. He would okay. berate me a lot, not just due to getting heat online, although he did that a lot, but in general, whenever he would get into an argument or a disagreement, he would always call me names like annoying or weird or stupid. He would raise his voice at me if I did something he didn't like and call me an idiot and it really hurt I felt like I couldn't bring up anything <sighs> or do anything without getting insulted if Crazy. I hadn't seen him in a few days because he was hey guys don't raise your voice at your partner was too busy streaming and I asked okay. to hang out he would call me needy clingy and annoying granted he might not have been wrong but that is not something <laughs> okay you say to someone you claim to love he Okay, probably not, but if you are those things, like, I just don't, what, what do you want me to tell you? So far, he's kind of an asshole. Who cares? Also insulted me when I was in depressive episodes. I have borderline personality <sighs> disorder, and at the time, I was not being treated properly for it. So I was all over the place emotionally, and he is- I just feel like, do you actually have BPD, or are you just saying that you do, like everyone else does when they have some kind of an issue going on on the internet? We're like, oh, well, I have a mental health issue. It's like, okay, do you? Like, what I clung on to for validation, reassurance, and love. I talked <sighs> to him when we first started dating about my disorder, and told him that if it seemed like something he couldn't handle, that he could- So you, ha you knew about the disorder when you first had it and you weren't getting the right treatment for it how come what was preventing you from doing that opt out of the it's like here's the thing is that it can be very difficult to be with somebody with a mental health issue i understand that um and it can be hard to act the right way through it that's just like a reality of the situation so it's possible that he went into it and you're like oh i have bpd you were admitted self-admittedly not um treating it correctly so you're probably still a handful and like it is a good thing if you're with somebody whether it's a relationship or like a, like a romantic one or even just a friendship to be more uh give that person more leeway when it comes to their mental health issue absolutely but at the end of the day like you're still it still makes you a lot you know i i know that i could be a lot when i'm with my wife too you know it's a constant um it's constantly trying to be aware of your behavior so that you don't have a negative impact on other people and constantly like you know interact the correct way <laughs> You know, it's not uncommon for my wife and I, because I'm quick to get um, impulsively angry. 
So I'll give you like an example of the other day. <clears throat> it's like a silly little thing. This is apparently something that people with ADHD have. So, but I've been like, that's not an excuse. I've worked on the behavior. So the other day, um, I, I went, I, I was a little time crunch. So I asked my wife if I needed to go shopping. She wanted me to go to Costco and the supermarket. So I asked her, I was like, oh, do you need me to go to Costco and the supermarket today? Or can I do it tomorrow? Like, will it impact anything? And basically we had a miscommunication where <laughs> it's such a stupid thing. A, a miscommunication and what had happened uh, is that she's like no i don't but we're gonna have to go i, I don't need anything for tonight but I'm, we're gonna have to go to the supermarket tonight because i need stuff for tomorrow and i got kind of angry i'm like well that's what i was asking you if you need me to go today like why are you like why are we playing this game right now it was a weird thing and then afterwards i called her like an hour later and I'm like listen i'm sorry <laughs> sorry i overreacted because i got like impulsively angry right and she gives me that leeway to be like a little bit of an asshole uh and you know process it myself and like you know chill the fuck out because like she knows that i can be a little bit impulsive and quick to anger like that and so like that's how you have a productive conversation about that but i'm also a 33 year old man that has a pretty good handle and understanding of like my negative behaviors and so like you're probably like a 20 something year old that does not have that thing and so you're probably a lot and it's not like not everybody is a behavioral specialist that can sit there and help somebody process their yeah you're 22 and i'm assuming he's like the same age so it's not easy for if you're somebody like when i was 22 i didn't have like a regulation over this shit so it, it's you know you you become too unfortunately like a burden to people when you have behaviors and you're n you're not grasping those behaviors and you're not working on those behaviors and you can come off as a lot um, it's an unfortunate reality, so relationship. I guess he didn't think it was that bad or something. I don't know. Because whenever I had really bad depressive episodes, he would tell me I was too sad to hang out with. He said that my sadness was a burden to him, which would be fair. But once my mother had a conversation with him about me, she told him that I am someone who needs a lot of love and caring. She said that if he wasn't willing to put in that kind of effort into a relationship, to just leave me alone. He reassured her that he would be there for me no matter what. He told my mother- That sounds like he was trying to put in like an effort, but it was too much for him. Okay. I don't think he's necessarily a bad guy for not leaving you because you had mental health problems, even if he didn't act perfectly. He would protect me in my heart. He did not. He took all the warnings I gave him and ignored them, and then made me feel like I was the problem. And even worse, he would say that I was pretending to be sad to get his attention, when he would neglect me for days at a time. There it's possible. I mean, listen, I've, like, dated somebody who would weaponize their issue just to uh, not have to work, you know? They would sensationalize it sometimes, and they would, like, exaggerate on it and use it as an excuse. People do that sometimes. You might have been doing that. I'm not saying that you absolutely were, but, like, I don't know. Like, you're, giving, you're asking us to speculate, and I'm going to use my life experience for it. People will sometimes act shitty. <laughs> like, people will sometimes use their uh, mental health problems as a, an excuse to engage in bad behavior rather than an acknowledgement of that behavior to work on it from like a more behavioral perspective, so. There were also some smaller things, like the fact that he made me feel really guilty whenever he would spend money on me. Also, he would okay. be really mean about my eating habits. How much did you guys have, like, habits? Okay, For whatever. context, I used to suffer from an eating disorder. I was anorexic and had a really unhealthy relationship with food during high school in my first year of uni. This relationship began when I was recovering from my eating disorder. For me, eating was really hard, so I had certain comfort foods that, while sometimes unhealthy, What was it, chicken nuggets and mac and cheese? At least it was something to eat when I didn't feel like eating anything. He knew this, yet whenever I would- Pop a gut. It's shitty to tell somebody, uh, uh, someone's mental health is too much to uh, to be around them, but not break up with them. Okay, so the problem is, is that you're not taking what she's saying with a grain of salt. If I was listening to his story in the opposite end, I would be picking it apart in the same exact way because she's half of the story and half of the conversation. So like to you, you're just like, oh, um, she's saying that she's a lot and he should just leave. And, and then you're like, oh yeah, why didn't he do that? Because it's more complicated than that. He's probably, well, he probably meant well and wanted to stay with the person and not like leave them over mental health issues. And then, but it would still be like too much of a weight and drag onto him. You're putting, you're, you're kind of un unintentionally or intentionally uh, putting this air into him that like he was intentionally like trying to be dismissive or a shitty partner when the reality is is that these sounds like two young people who are together where neither of them have a uh understand the right way to deal with her mental health issues potential mental health issues by the way i don't even know if they're legitimately diagnosed i'm very skeptical of that stuff so like you know that's the problem you know you guys you look at it you you have like this anchor bias where if you hear hear the information from this one source you're going to believe that source regardless of what the other person says and that's a huge problem that people have to work through i'm picking it apart on purpose and if he was saying stuff i would say the same exact shit like there's a middle ground here generally speaking i doubt that either of these people are bad people they're just like individuals going through things and then we live in an over affirming fucking internet culture that doesn't understand how to parse through complicated mental health problems that's what we're talking about here crave some of these foods he would call me fat constantly told me i'd gain weight from eating all that junk food saying that to someone with an eating disorder is crazy <sighs> other small things that were whenever i would post tiktoks where i was lip syncing or just looking good he would yell at me and say i was looking for attention same with instagram or twitter whenever 
Maybe. Where I would post photos where I looked hot. <laughs> he never planned out okay. a single date for us. I would beg that him sucks. to get me flowers. And he did maybe once, but I'll get into that in a bit. He would okay. make fun of me in front of his friends to make himself look better. He let his friends say really degrading things about me in his presence. For example, once when I was showering, I overheard him on a Discord call with George and Sapnap, and I heard George say, if you don't go in the shower and have sex with Andy, I will. Once when I was really struggling with my legs. Okay. For those of you who don't know, I have arthritis and it's very painful. Oh my god. <laughs> Pick a struggle. I'm not trying to be rude. Did you actually, did this person actually have all these issues or what? At the time I wasn't diagnosed, but I was in a lot of pain. <laughs> okay. I literally could not walk. I had to- Why does this person have constant I undiagnosed issues? What? I don't know, dude. This is- okay. Beg him to take me to the emergency room because I didn't know what was wrong with me. He didn't want to take me, but I eventually convinced him. And while we were there, all he did was complain about how long it was taking and that he would have rather. I would have complained too. The fucking hospital takes forever. Been at home streaming. Whenever I would talk about my interests that I was excited about, like shows or books, he would be incredibly uninterested and say that those things were stupid and he didn't want to hear about them. I know all of these seem really silly or superficial. No, not really. It just makes me question why you stayed with him for so long. It just feels like you're putting a lot of. I, mean, I just don't understand. But cumulatively, it was awful. Now for arguably the most serious thing I'm going to talk about. Okay. I want to preface this by saying I'm just telling you my side of what happened. You can come to your own conclusions about this. On April 25th, 2022, it was our one year anniversary, and I made a dinner reservation for us. I expected him to plan something throughout the day for us to do. He told me he was going to spend the whole day playing back. Oh my god, do you forget works when you're in the middle of talking? Talking, I struggle with sometimes, so I was curious about that. What do you? I'm not really entirely sure what you're asking me to be honest with you. Do you forget works? What does that mean? I'll rant, so I got upset and canceled the reservation after a very heated argument. <sighs> Sorry. Told me he was going to spend the whole day playing Valorant, so I got upset and canceled the reservation. 25th, 2022, it was our one year anniversary, and I made a dinner reservation for us. I expected him to plan something throughout the day for us to do. He told okay. me he was going to spend the whole day playing Valorant, so I got upset and canceled the reservation. After a very heated argument, we calmed down, and I asked him to come over. He came over about an hour later with flowers and drinks. I was 20 at the time, so I couldn't buy the drinks myself. He bought Smirnoffs and Trulies. For context, okay. I am a lightweight. I always have been. I literally get tipsy on half a cocktail. Okay. Just to be clear, you are an adult. It's illegal for you to drink until you're 21, but 18 year illegal adult. I don't. I'm just. I'm just letting you know. I'm not gonna. I don't care about like that. Well, he should have bought me alcohol argument. I don't give a shit. And that day, I hadn't eaten anything because I was in distress over our argument. So we get to talking and drinking. I blacked out after my second Smirnoff. Apparently, I drank three, but I genuinely cannot remember anything after finishing the second one. The next okay. morning, I woke up naked in my bed. I woke him up and asked him, Luke, why am I naked? And he said, because you didn't want to put your clothes back on. When I clarified to him that that was not what I meant, he got defensive and said he didn't realize how drunk I was. He proceeded to tell me that I initiated sex with him, and I was okay. very enthusiastic about it. He said he didn't know I could black out on three Smirnoffs. He made fun of me for being a lightweight and continued to make light of the situation. Then he mentioned that I fell off the bed at some point in the night and that it was funny how drunk I was. I then questioned him because if he thought that me tripping and falling <laughs> off the bed because I was so drunk was funny, how did he not know that I was too drunk? He was Listen, I don't know. These Again, these situations are very uh, complicated. We're talking about two people in a romantic relationship that probably regularly have sex with each other where both of you were probably drunk. Um, is it possible that he knew you were super drunk and maybe? I don't, I don't really know. Um... I don't. I mean, like, maybe he was just as drunk as you or close to as drunk as you. Uh, maybe he wasn't. Maybe, I mean, I, you know, maybe you were in a situation where you were blackout drunk and it didn't seem like that to him. I don't really know. Um, to be honest with you, like, all I know is that in my relationship, if I was incredibly drunk and my wife was only a little drunk and we had sex, I wouldn't be upset about it. You know, like, I mean, maybe that's just my, like, relationship bias. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, inappropriate. Not the same as, like, if you're at a party and somebody's blackout drunk and you have sex with them. You know, I uh, could potentially be wrong. There's a lot of context that we would need when it comes to this situation. But okay. Responded by saying that I fell off the bed only after we were done. That day, I broke up with him. I'm still really confused about okay. what happened that night. I don't remember anything, and all I have to go on is what he said to me. We were in a relationship at the time, and he says he didn't know how drunk I was, so I'm okay. not sure what to call what happened. A while after that day, his friend that hit me up while we were broken up and I started talking again, and I confided in him about that night. He told me to be careful saying things like that, because they could get me into trouble. I spoke to some of our other friends about it, and they told me it was no big deal, and that it wasn't his fault and he didn't know how drunk I really was. Because I don't remember, I have been led to believe that this is not a serious matter. You can think what you want. Come to whatever conclusions you want. That is just my side of the story. Okay. I wanted to add that I'm not proud of how I acted after the relationship ended. I felt really angry at all the shit he put me through. And I guess a part of me wanted him to hurt even a quarter of how I did. So I started talking to his friend and got involved with him. This- Okay. Great. This backfired on me because his friend- I'm not understanding. So you- you and him had like a bad interaction and then you wanted to get back at him? I- 
to hurt, I, don't, I don't know. Okay, whatever. It ended up hurting me too. So I guess I got my karma. But the thing that hurt the most is that because of what I did, some of our friends took his side in the breakup. I was told- <sighs> Oh yeah, it sounds like you, I mean, yeah, okay. I get it, kind of get it. That I did something terrible by getting involved with his friend that he was already insecure about and that he didn't deserve that. These are the same friends who were witness to the dumpster fire of a relationship we had and all the things he did to me. They turned their backs on me because of this one thing I did, but stood by and watched as he treated me like garbage for over a year. I will conclude this by saying that while this a relationship- I mean, maybe there's a little more to the story. I don't know. Relationship has been done and over with for almost two years now. I carry a lot of trauma from it still. I still talk about him in therapy and have had to put in a lot of work to heal from what he did. And I can okay. still not say that I am okay. I am very blessed now to have a patient and understanding partner who has helped me heal from that trauma. And I just want to quickly thank him for that. No cool. That's good. You learned a formative lesson in life by going through a negative experience. Um, same. My last, like I, my last relationship was horrific. I hated it. I'm not going to sit here and say I was traumatized, but what I will say is that for the most part, now that I'm with my wife, um, when we, when, when like when I'm sad, uh, I just think like I'm not in that relationship anymore, and I'm with the love of my life, and I feel uh, astoundingly fantastic. Like it gets me through a lot. Like it's just like yeah, at least I'm not with that person anymore. <laughs> I have a wife that appreciates me, that loves me. I'm in love. Everything's great. Um, I don't sit here and talk about how you know, like you know, I look back and like I have I have unfortunate icky feelings, but I'm not gonna sit here. And say that like she was this horribly abusive person. We were both shit, and it's probably similar in that relationship, you know. And you tend to focus on your issues. It's easy for me to say, like I'm married to like a behavioral specialist, so it's constant. It's basically if you're married to somebody like that, like some kind of person that's in social work or a therapist, it's just you're, they take work home with them. So you know, I'm always able to be very aware of my behaviors because we have those conversations constantly. But like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like nowadays people look at negative experiences in the past and they're like, see, this was horrible. It was traumatic. I'm still dealing with this. I'm still dealing with that. I'm still this. I'm still. And it's like, you know, talk to your therapist and that's kind of on you. Like you had a bad experience and you it's time to move on. It's time to like, you know, you don't need to sit here and, and play, you know, online cancellation with people. Like I, I, I you know, and, and maybe that's just me because I'm projecting my experience on people. But, you know, I'm very I'm kind of sick and tired of people talking about these things like this. It's very we, we, we care too much about the way people feel. I know it sounds horrible because I like caring about the way people feel, but it's like people don't know how to separate real world events from the way that they perceive real world events. And for you to come online and like play cancellation over this so far, it just it's it's frustrating and it's annoying. You could keep this in private. Um but hey, maybe there's more going on that I don't know about. <sighs> Nobody deserves to go through what I did. Well, yes, it was a toxic relationship and I had a part in that. It See, there you go, right there. That's the thing. Like if you, uh, like if anybody that's in a toxic relationship is going to unintentionally side with themselves and they're going to see what they did as less of a big deal as what the other person did because you're you and you probably justify your bad behavior by going like, oh, well, this person did this to me, so this was okay. Right. So when you're like, yeah, it was, this guy was horrible to me, but it was a toxic relationship. It's like, yeah, that means that there's things that like you not telling us and you probably don't even know that you did wrong because of it. So it's like, why am I going to sit here? Like none of this, like this is filtered through your perspective, especially after sitting there and little, really letting it like, you know, sit in and settle in on you. So like, why am I going to be super empathetic to something when it's probably both of them were pieces of shit in the relationship? Like, I, you know what I mean? Like it's time for us to kind of grow up and understand that I've been in shitty relationships I'm not now. It's great. You know, I was part of that shit. I'm incredible. I'm very difficult to be with. Like, I understand that as well. Like, I'm difficult to be with. And I understand that it's probably a stressor in those relationships. And it's like, you know, acknowledge it. it's time to acknowledge these types of things. You know, we don't need to make everything online cancellation party. So it does not excuse all the awful things he said and did to me. This is my truth. Thank you for taking the time to read it. And now for Pun's response to all of this on Twitter. He tweets out, I removed my art from my profile in respect and by request of the artist. I would what? like to start this off by saying that in no way do I intend to invalidate victims in this statement. I unequivocally- well, right off the bat, you're a fucking idiot. Like, I hate when people do that shit too. Stop, stop being overly sensitive to like people. Oh, well, she's a victim. A victim of what? Okay. Well, maybe you, maybe he is. He's a horrible fucking rapist or something. Stand with victims of sexual assault. These are very serious allegations okay. being brought against me, and I Same would like guys. to treat them as such. I will directly be referring to statements with quotes from Andy's posts regarding me. Background This statement is giving more context to a relationship I had with Andy, Andy VMG. There's a few main takeaways I feel are important. I felt during and after processing our relationship that Andy and I's personalities were incompatible. This caused a Probably. lot of. I mean, you, how old is this guy? She's like 22 now. Now. Like, how old is this guy? They're fucking kids. Like, 
27. Okay. So like how long ago? Is it two years ago? They're still immature people. Like, I mean, at least for me, I, I matured very slowly. I always started dating my ex like 24. I was an immature person. Like, okay. Clashing constant arguments and stress on both of us. I felt like because of this on both sides, it brought out the worst of us. I do not stand by all of my actions. Probably. Actions during this relationship. Like, I know that there was a lot of stuff that contributed to my, 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 my ah, me staying with my ex that was, like, uncontrollable for both of the sides of us. That we're both, like, even both of us are, um, I don't want to say the word victims of, but you understand what I'm saying. We're, I'm not saying that we're victims. I'm just saying that, like, that's stuff that was out of our control. We tried to, you know what I mean? This is life... I feel as though they do not represent the person I am today. I don't want to focus on small details as to not take away from my main points and defenses, but I would like to shed some light on some of her exaggerations and untrue allegations as well, as provide my perspective so you can see that this was not one-sided situations with me as a perpetrator and her as a victim, but how much of our relationship consisted of an extremely toxic dynamic with inexcusable behavior. Yeah, I mean, if you've been in a relationship with anybody, like, before, and you're, like, an older person, you would have looked at what she said and been like, okay, I don't care, like... If you're a young person that hasn't experienced relationships and you don't really understand how complicated and unfortunate they can be, especially when there are a lot of like toxic dynamics going on and outside forces pressuring you, like for instance, like money was a significant stressor in, in my last relationship. If you don't understand that, like you don't have a lot of life experience to parse through. And so it's 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 not as easy to communicate these things to you because some things you can't just tell somebody. That's how it happens, right? Like sometimes you have to experience some of these different things to understand. From both sides, dubious consent. I'd like to dubious start by addressing consent. the night of April 25th, as referred to in Andy's statement, while also bringing up context she talked about in her Tumblr post on February 27th, 2024. I'd like to tread carefully on this sensitive topic, but also stay firm on the fact that I did not and would not take advantage of anyone ever. I realize that this is all my word against hers, so I would like to explain my experience in the most concise way possible and let you form your own opinions. In the prior post, she mentioned something that did stand true, which was that there was a long period of time with zero intimacy that was because of myself my lack of libido has followed me for many years and thus caused uh cringe issues in multiple relationships just kidding sorry even having me wondering if i am possibly asexual her biggest supporters are very young teens well that's the problem it's all the young people with no life experience that don't really understand like how you know unfortunate life circumstances can be and it's very interesting because it's a lot of young people that will talk about how like oppressive our system is and, and how horrible it is for being middle class absolutely true but they don't understand how those bad life experiences experiences can make you a worse person when you're struggling and you're 10 over ten thousand dollars in debt you're not going to act like a particularly good person anytime you come home from work tired after a 12-hour day and decide to get food is a con is basically you having a conversation with yourself about plunging yourself into further debt because you're so tired you don't want to make food and like when that happens every single day you have a lot of external things going on like these things build up you know when you're thousands of dollars in debt, you're not going to act perfect i'm not saying that's what they are in but i've been there before so it's like okay like i understand people not acting perfectly we're talking about about two people, one with supposedly a, a, a myriad of mental health problems that can be difficult to be with, um, that by her admission doesn't have them regulated or under control in any capacity, which is very unfair to a partner that you're with, and the two of them are having these issues. Like, what you know what I mean? Like, what I wouldn't expect either of them to act perfectly in this scenario. Sexual, because I'm not meeting the standards of my partners. I am saying this to further explain that I am in no way a sexual or horny person. I was not the one to, uh, I am. to initiate sex often at all. I've always worked hard to validate and support past victims of sexual assault, including my own partners, which is why wow. I am asking you to understand my point of view and my recollection of the night of April 25th. Explicit warning, somewhat vivid depictions of sexual encounter, necessary for context from the time that we began drinking to the time that we got in bed together. At least three hours had passed. In this time, she had no more than three drinks, and I had approximately five. To my Memory, she had about 2.5 Smirnoff Ices. 2.5? Actually. Andy says, I said that he didn't realize how drunk I was, and I told her that she initiated sex with me and was very enthusiastic about it, and that was true. She got okay. on top of me, straddled, and began making out with me. This yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. It was a routine way she would initiate her sexual encounters during our year-long relationship, so I sensed nothing out of the ordinary. At no point was she seeming dizzy, slurring her words, or at all incoherent during this time. I did not think she was any more than tipsy. I'd been around her drinking before. I genuinely didn't think she had too many drinks, and would have never initiated or continued having sex with her if I had any idea that something was wrong. The Okay. Next I mean, I'm not. I'm gonna be honest with you. My wife is like plastered. And she's horny. I'm gonna fuck her. I don't care if she's blackout drunk, as long as she's able to. <laughs> if I'm the same way, we've had this conversation too. It's not even like uh, something that I'm like. We've had this conversation. We've we've talked about it. like what happens if one of us is like really drunk and the other one's not. Like neither of us care. Like it, I, like you know. And it's it's nice being in a very mature relationship with somebody. You know what I mean? Obviously, if if she was so drunk that like she couldn't do anything, it's one like it does. It's a totally different scenario. Um. But like for the most part, like we one of like I I frequently get incredibly drunk when I'm with her. Not frequently. I don't drink a lot. But when I do, when I get drunk, I get drunk and I get very handsy with her. And she likes it. I get very affectionate. You know what I mean? We've taken it home. And when she gets a little drunk, she gets a little affection as well. 
I don't know. And again, we have a more mature relationship with boundaries that have been very explored, very well um, expressed with each other. We have a very healthy relationship. So it's a little bit different. But like, that's just my kind of take on alcohol. You know, I don't think that. Yeah. Bro. Eh. This morning, I woke up naked in my bed. I woke him up and asked him, Luke, why am I naked? And he said, because you didn't want to put your clothes back on. That statement Andy made is true. The tone of my response was sarcastic, coming from a place of genuine cluelessness. She regularly slept with little clothing on, and I had no idea she was fully naked, as I am not someone who touches my partners while I'm sleeping. I wasn't saying it matter-of-factly, but also didn't mean any harm by what I said. This is because at no point during this conversation, or any of our later discussions for that matter, did I feel like she was accusing me of taking advantage of her. This situation was brought up between us in conversation, after the fact, where she confirmed to me that she believed I wouldn't take advantage of her and that she trusts me. Anything I said to make light of the situation was not meant to dismiss her feelings. She did seem confused that she was not wearing clothes, but I didn't feel like she was even insinuating. I've had the same conversation with my husband. It's nice to have that kind of connection and comfort. Yeah, exactly. Like it's 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 honestly very nice, guys. You know what the the biggest reason why you shouldn't be having casual sex? This this is why. <laughs> However, they were in a relationship. I guess you're fucked either way. <laughs> being in a healthy relationship with like explored boundaries honestly this is like stop dating you guys shouldn't date influencers like that's all i'll say um who who make because this is fucking crazy don't date minecrafters stay away from people like this that make incredibly immature content that's actually what i would say don't date people that make immature content um if it's a person making like minecraft don't date this person because they're inside of, inside of like a toxic community don't date somebody with a child's audience there we go i think that's probably the best way to go because they they get too much affirmation for like a completely disconnected, unreal like stupidity, uh, too much. Like they don't. It's a lot of kids that have no idea how the world works, talking about things as if they know how the the world works. It's something like I genuinely stay away from people like that because they are a lot of content creators are a slave to like um, their audience and audience capture. So I would genuinely stay away from these people. They it's like an instantaneous red flag. Their minds are like rot and warped. It's just not something that you really want to engage with. Waiting, I could have crossed the line. I have always been extremely cautious and understanding of her experience every time we were intimate. And to Andy, with everything I've said, I still don't mean to invalidate your experience. You do not deserve to go through life not knowing what happened that night. I am sorry that I came across as being unserious to a very serious matter. I really hope that you still believe I did not and never would take advantage of you in the slightest, hiding the relationship. Another thing I had to endure was him constantly making me feel like he was embarrassed to be with me. Because I was cancelled, he didn't want to associate with me too much. Well okay, and again, I don't I don't care because first of all, then grow up and break up with him. Second of all, you're both con like I would never do this because I'm not a fucking loser, a Minecraft coward. But that's your buy-in for that relationship, and you both probably would have treated each other the same way because you both seem to have very immature audiences of Minecraft idiots that get upset when somebody says this the fucking the bee slur, you know. And I know my audience would get a little upset if I said it too. I understand that, but like we would be mature about it. And I also have no reason to say it because I'm not an immature fuck and I'm not going through some kind of a weird, you know, identity crisis um, because I feel invalidated by the existence of like my fucking identity. So like you would have probably done the same. You're both. This is your buy in. Like you knew the rules. Like, what do you... It is what it is, man. Okay. Well, Andy may have felt that I was embarrassed to be with her. This is not at all how I viewed our relationship. We began speaking in... I can't wait for like 10 years to pass and all these creators coming forward talking about how they wish they never came forward with their, their shit. That's what I can't wait for. Dating while long distance, and very early on into us talking, I made it very clear that if we were to pursue a relationship together, it would have to be private for the unforeseeable future. This was something she agreed on in order to move forward. Her being cancelled was not at all why we weren't public. At the time, I was growing exponentially online, and couldn't predict the actions of fans. I looked for guidance from peers often, and was advised that keeping my romantic relationships private would be better for everyone. Although it may have negatively affected her or us, I genuinely didn't think it would be safe to be public with her, and that is not only okay. for my sake. But and again, I think that's just cowardice overall but they both made they both came to that understanding in the relationship so you you, you both allowed it you're both being cowards in that scenario. Hers as well. I do realize this may have caused distress or felt unfair for her, and I never intended for that. After seeing how awful fans treated her without confirmation of us, I only assumed it would worsen if I publicized it. She mentioned I did defend her on multiple occasions, which is true. I stood behind her even when it hurt my reputation. Racism. The ba Oh, okay. Well, that I just whole thing seems stupid as fuck. Background for anyone that isn't Yeah, the bean word. Maybe the way is that Andy said the bee slur publicly or somebody's gonna shoot me and kill me and received a lot of backlash online for it this was during our relationship while we were in the car talking about the situation I made an idiotic comment where I said I mean you are a bee aren't you in which I said <laughs> the word once not twice as Andy refers to in her statement this comment came from a place of genuine ineducation as I don't care like it's not you shouldn't be saying stuff like that but I don't really give a shit I, I don't know how to express it I don't think that you should be saying slurs at all online offline or whatever but when you're in like a group with this, like with this person, 
you probably he probably said this because he thought it was funny and it wasn't and she set the boundaries that it's not funny and he stopped it's like why do i care you know what i mean like okay you know what i mean like i that's how you set the boundary i don't know like, uh. I was confused as to why people were offended. I thought it was a slur referring to any Hispanic person, and I wrongly assumed that she could reclaim it as a Puerto Rican. After this was- I'm pretty sure it's- I thought it was just for fucking Mexican people, though. ...said, I could instantly tell that Andy was not okay with it. I apologized profusely and felt extremely guilty for saying it. I was- uh, my favorite Hispanic, by the way. Actually, I think it's El Salvadorian. I like them a lot. They're pretty cool. I've worked with a lot of Salvadorians. Very good guys. Always hard work and a lot of fun completely remorseful and not at all smiling or laughing at her reaction. This was still an incredibly stupid mistake. <laughs> I'm a few minutes behind, but saying you were blackout drunk on two Smirnoff Ice is crazy. Yeah, that's true. It's actually very doubtful that you got completely blackout drunk on it. What is the Smirnoff Ice alcohol content? What? Um, on my part, and in no way... Right, how much alcohol... How much... A and smear... I can't smell Smirnoff Ice. Four and a half percent? You got fucking blackout drunk on four and a half percent fucking bottle of alcohol? I had a friend. Okay, I have a friend. He's a great guy. Okay? He's a short person. Really small guy. Like four foot tall. He's not that short. He's like five foot tall. He drank two light beers one time. And like he blew over the limit. We got in the car together. He wasn't drunk. And he only had two light beers. He blew the limit. He started pulling out. He didn't have his lights on. The cop immediately pulled him over. And he, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Because the only reason his lights were off is because he was using his mom's car. His car lights automatically turn on. So the cop pulls him out. He's like, oh, are you drunk? And you know, he's very uh, neurotic. He gets very worked up very quickly when he's like frustrated. So he gets, <laughs> so he's like kind of almost hyperventilating over nothing. So the guy thinks he's drunk. So he tests him. This is the behavior he always engaged in. And he, he blew a little bit over the limits. So the guy's like, listen, I'm not going to give you a ticket, but you can't drive home. So I got in the car and I drove. So it was like, fine. It worked out. The cop was really nice. I appreciate the guy. Um... I'm saying, I'm saying this because, um, like, there's no fucking way you were blackout drunk on two Smirnoff ices, even if you hadn't eaten the whole day. I just don't know if I believe that. That's fucking preposterous. All right, and 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 even if you were, nobody would expect you to do that. So for your, boy, your boyfriend to be like, "Oh, uh, I didn't know," like, yeah, no shit, two two Smirnoff ices, it's wild, wild. Yo, shut the fuck up. Did I mean to offend her? I was in the process of writing my apology and he just said that. It was after the situation in the car that I helped Andy write her public apology. I did not say this while she was writing it. My little B. This part is just a straight lie. I did not say that. While I realize that my this is a word I cannot and should never have said, it was not said in the context or with the words Andy claims. I wholeheartedly am sorry for ever letting this word come out of my mouth. And I can assure you that I have never ever said it again. I apologize to Hus anyone who- My husband calls me the beastler when joking around and I call him a cracker. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, that's how, that makes sense. My wife and I call each other shit all the time. We call each other, like, fucking bitch, you know, stuff like that. We call each other all the time. I don't know. It's, like, affectionate words for us. Oh, my wife's home, and it sounds like she has, uh, she's upset. I don't know, maybe because she's a, she's a bitch. I'm just kidding. Who feels let down or has lost trust in me after hearing this. He also refused to visit me in Puerto Rico when I lived there. I, I don't want to go to fucking Puerto Rico either, bro. Did refuse to visit her in Puerto Rico, and in all honesty, this was for completely selfish reasons. I wanted to stream consistently, and this was the peak of my career. Okay, fine. I don't care about that. That sounds fine. This was another instance of me being a bad boyfriend, but it was not for... I mean, listen, I understand wanting to... Listen, I personally believe in setting like a solid boundary of like, you know, work-life balance boundary. Um, which I think I have with myself and my wife and everything, you know, stream like three hours a day. I do my work, you know, uh, usually when my, like, my wife is sleeping or before she's home or whatever. And I, we have plenty of time to spend with each other. I don't think I, I don't I don't think that because you feel like you need to stream more for your career, that makes you a bad person because maybe you do. I don't know. This was I don't know. I know for me and my content, this works perfectly. I think for a lot of people, you could adapt a similar lifestyle uh, that I do if you're like financially viable, of course. Um but like, if his uh, his excuse is like, well, yeah, I wanted to stream consistently. Like, okay, I mean, I don't know how if you could, could you. I don't know if he could I get a setup in Puerto Rico. I can easily go on a vacation to fucking Disney and pump out a video a day still, which I have done. Um, I'll backlog content. And I can pump out content because all I need is a laptop and a microphone and a, a recording. Like, it's 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 different content. It's not the same exact thing. I have that benefit of being able to do that. Not everybody does. So him to set up an entire setup in Puerto Rico, I don't know if, like how the internet would be over there or with their family or there's so many different variables. I don't really know. So like, okay, fine. He didn't want to go to fucking Puerto Rico. Like I, okay. Any other reason she may suggest. He implied that the Sharma sisters were too dark for him to be attracted to them. We were watching Bridgerton and Andy asked me if I found these actresses to be attractive. Bridgerton isn't Bridgerton a fucking comedy with like a bunch of fucking, wait, what, what, maybe I'm wrong. 
I'm thinking of something else. What's Bridgerton? Oh, okay. So I'm thinking, what the fuck am I thinking of? Little, I'm thinking of like Little England or something. I figured as she was my girlfriend, the best response would be to say that I was not attracted to them. Exactly. That's always the response. You're never attracted to be to any other woman. Um, when you're with your with your with your wife, I literally my wife is weird. She goes to the gym and then dances in this room alone. She says, "Oh, I'm doing I'm doing Zumba with a bunch of people. I don't see them because they're all girls." I don't even see gay guys. That's how fucking much I love my wife. And that they were not my type. My intention was literally to reassure her that she's the person I am attracted to, not to imply they are too dark. And then this combined with the fact he told me he wasn't attracted to me made me feel like my skin color wasn't attractive. All I wanted during my Bridgerton answer was to reassure Andy that she was the only person I was attracted to. This was completely unrelated to something I said to her when we were breaking up. I never said to Andy that her skin color was too dark or unattractive. Friend A. In Andy's Tumblr post from February 27th, 2024, she refers to herself and a friend of mine who hit her up. My prefaces that with friend A, Andy had flirtatious interactions before, during, and after our romantic relationship. This is a much larger creator than myself, and someone I was closely associated with at the time. She okay. says, there was some flirtation going on, but nothing serious. I was still in love with puns, but at the time, I was in desperate need for attention and his buddy was there to provide it. Her interactions with this person were one of the largest contributors to my lack of trust in many of our arguments in the future. Andy initially messaged friend A before her and I were dating with a flirtatious message, with the desire to make content with him. Months into our relationship- Okay, so she was already kind of had feelings for the this guy or it communicated that and that made him self-conscious okay chip and after i had already moved to florida and essentially gotten more serious with andy i was in a discord call with friend a and this friend decided to tell me that andy had dm'd him before but refused to disclose what she had sent to him and she deleted her messages on her end when i confronted andy she continuously said she couldn't recall what she sent it's weird that neither of them are saying it it's kind of fucked up actually or even what it could potentially be about our relationship was extremely rocky and we broke up new yeah that makes perfect sense numerous times so i'm not sure if we were dating or technically on an exclusive break but during one of these times is when Andy and friend A were flirting and simultaneously talking poorly about me. Poked fun at the fact he broke up with me but got mad at someone else paying attention to me. She I mean, did I mean, sure, that makes sense. Show me messages during this time, but I distinctly remember there being missing contacts and areas where the conversation didn't line up, and she would intentionally hide certain things they talked about. It's one thing to, like, date somebody in the same friend their circle. It's another thing to, like, talk an immense amount of shit about them to the other person. That's pretty fucked up. From me. Well, I mean, you shouldn't have really stayed with <laughs> Uh, you shouldn't have gone back with her. It's about, okay. I would suggest there was more and with more provoking, she would eventually admit it and show me more of what she was hiding. This happened multiple times and the more she showed me, the worse it got. She reassured me multiple times that there was nothing romantic between them and that she wanted to be with me. The next day he called me and we were basically back together again. However, this time, I was meant to earn his affection. Because I did something so unforgivable and atrocious, he was basically in the clear to treat me like shit. If you could even possibly understand who friend A was to me, then maybe it would make sense why I was so emotionally distraught. Like okay, so you're both pieces of shit. She's talked to like, your best friend, your best friend's also a piece of shit and then when you got back together you immaturely um treated her shitty because of what happened that's one of the things people are going to do bad things holding bad things over somebody's head if they are genuinely apologetic is shitty that's the reality even if she did a horrible thing to him like this like date your friend talk a bunch of shit that's terrible but if you decide to take her back while well, i think that she does need to earn your love back again um and he's always going to be um, have trust issues, which is justifiable because I relate to somewhat to some kind of a cheating sinit thing. You know, you still can't hold it over that person's head, right? There's a difference between now having trust issues with the person versus holding it over their head. If that's what he was doing, and that means like if he's justifying treating her like shit because of it, that's holding it over her head. That's wrong. But if he had some trust issues, which is probably a little bit of both, um, that's all just that's justifiable and understandable, right? Okay, cool. Again, both immature, shitty assholes. Like I've said, I am aware there were instances where I acted like a poor boyfriend, but this was amidst the biggest betrayal of my entire life. I couldn't tell if she was using him to hurt me, she actually wanted to be with him more, or both. I questioned everything. Moving on to a couple months after our breakup, there was a situation where both Andy and I were invited to the same gathering with friends. At this point, things were somewhat civil and we had the same mutual friends. On an outing, Andy is looking over at my phone asking who I am talking to. I tell her the person, who was someone I later go on to have a relationship with. She proceeds to list off three to four people she was snapchatting, and then says, you were not going to like the last person, and then proceeds to say friend A. This was the moment that I decided I could not be civil with or associated with her any longer. There was no reason for her to even tell me that they were talking, but I only can imagine it was intentional to hurt me. I later learned that our mutual friends had been aware this was happening with friend A, as Andy told them and they advised her to stop talking to this person and that it was wrong, but she did not care. Her and friend A pursued each other well after it ended with us, which she admits herself she did intentionally to hurt even a quarter of how she did. Issues regarding this person had okay. come up so many times by her own free will that I genuinely felt she was doing it on purpose. She 
wanted to make sure I knew they were talking and what they were talking about and that I was hurt by what she was doing. Friend B, another key point in our relationship that resulted in a lot of frustration and insecurity on my part came from Andy's interactions with another one of my good friends who has a larger platform than myself. From my knowledge, this friend didn't tell me about it until after Andy and I were together because we began speaking privately and he didn't know. Prior to our relationship, Andy and friend B were mutually flirting to the point where she sent him explicit photos. This is something Andy flat out denied to me when I asked her, but friend B told me what happened. Later in 2021, there was a time where a large group including myself, Andy, and friend B were together. I felt like Andy was ignoring me and spending most of her time talking to and interacting with this friend to the point where many of the other friends- this is like legitimate. Okay. Friends there found it odd Drama. and spoke about it amongst themselves and later with me. One person there even said, it seems like Andy is all over friend B. When I brought it up to her that day, she completely denied that it was even happening. This is just one concrete instance where I felt like she gaslit me into believing that she did nothing wrong and I was being crazy and overprotective. Her insincere apology many days afterwards felt like an, I'm sorry you think that, and not an admission of wrongdoing. This was not just a friend either. This was someone she had a recent past of flirting with. This was now the second big instance that changed my perspective for the entire future of our relationship. I mean, like, to me, this is just too incredibly immature mature people they're kids they're young people 20 25 years old young immature people that are made to be more immature because their audience is a bunch of fucking kids on minecraft right like yeah okay like oh well this girl she talked to this person this guy talked to this person this one okay great okay with i mean uh, here's the thing like he didn't come forward with this until she did so i don't really fault him for it um, as much, but it's like, dude, this is whole entire thing is like fucking like ridiculous. It's like fucking brain rot. You know what I mean? Um, it's like, okay, like you, you both suck. <laughs> it's time to move on. It's just interesting how the atmosphere encourages people to come forward and, and, and play pretend abuse. Um, and unfortunately, especially when it's women and that's not me saying women are bad or going like super red pill. I just think it's something that is happening and that we need to acknowledge it and it does need to change. Like we, we can't be incentivizing anybody, whether it's a man or a woman, to come forward with out of context, very clearly false allegations like this um, to try to damage somebody else's career. I mean, if she's fucking his best friend to get back to him, who's to say that he's not she's not doing this and sensationalizing this to get back at him, you know, um, especially since a lot of her resentment seems to lie on the fact that um he would prioritize his career over her by not wanting to go to Puerto Rico and then also uh, not telling people or not offending her publicly as much as she wanted him to or to try to suppress the fact that he's dating her. Uh, of course, she has like a resentment built up for for that. You know, it, it's it's crazy. We shouldn't be incentivizing anybody. We should get, create comfortable atmospheres for people to be able to speak their truth. But like this goes beyond a speaking of a truth. The confused conclusion in my head that she may have wanted my friends or other creators more than me or that she settled with me just because I was willing to be with her. This made it extremely difficult to trust her in her intentions for the future of our relationship. I feel like there were a lot of instances Andy mentioned that I can agree that I was dismissive and acting like a bad boyfriend. While I do realize these experiences have hurt her, there are many situations that she intentionally not including or downplaying her wrongdoings to further villainize me. I don't believe most of my actions came out of nowhere. We argued constantly. Mental health. I am aware that I made some invalidating comments towards sure. Andy's mental health during the course of our relationship. Probably did. Over. And there are probably instances where she may have weaponized her mental health and used it as an excuse. And there's probably also instances where she became too much and he didn't act the correct way. It's very difficult to be with somebody with mental health issues. It's very, it's even more difficult to be somebody with mental health issues. But like, we have to understand that like, you know, we can't just be like, well, you should be more understanding because clearly this person, as her own admittance is that she didn't have a handle on this. And it, it's, it's a very, it's a lot. It's a lot for my wife to be with me when I do have a handle on it. Okay. So it's difficult. All right. And I understand how difficult it can be. That's one of the reasons why I'm not like as angry at other people that I've dated. But when things weren't perfect, because I can be a lot. Like I have a very specific, strict way of like that. I like to do things that makes me kind of annoying uh, and tough to be with. Like I have like a very bizarre mental process of like this has to be done, be done this way. I could be a little bit, um, you know, like very stern. I could be a little annoying. Yeah, I get it. You know, like okay, uh, yeah. I mean, have a little bit of uh, you know, have a little bit of a spell, like self understanding. Overall, as she states, she has borderline personality disorder, and I was her favorite person. When she told me about her disorder, I had no prior knowledge or experience with someone who has borderline personality disorder. I felt like I was in love with her and willing to support her in all the ways that I could. Obviously, over time, the need she had put a lot of stress on me that I hadn't expected. He would call me need. Ethan clickbaited the debate. Cancelled. Need clingy and saying that he was trying his best, but that I needed too much. <laughs> that I was too much. I am completely aware of how hurtful it must have felt to Andy that I was her favorite person and Certainly I essentially couldn't spectrum. handle being what she needed. I definitely told her at times that I couldn't give her what she needed, but I wish I hadn't put so much of that blame on her. And I'm sorry for that. At times, she experienced mental health crises that I felt alone and unequipped for, and I didn't know where okay. to turn. She didn't want me to oh, tell anyone, including Fuck. her family, and I didn't want to betray her trust. This. Oh, I, mean, if you didn't, I wonder how much of this mental health crisis, though, is real then. If you didn't even want to tell your family. 
I don't know. You know, I'm very skeptical when people tell me about like mental health stuff online or not tell me, but or, or talk about it online because a lot of times they seem to do it for attention. You know, like when I talk about it, it's from a life experience perspective of like, hey, I can acknowledge behaviors and be better. You never use mental health as an excuse for doing a bad thing. Uh, it should be an acknowledgement to be better and to acknowledge your behaviors and to, to you know, basically engage in like behavioral therapy uh, to change yourself in a positive way. Right. But like a lot of people will be like, oh, I have ADHD. I can't fucking do anything. I can make a you just excuse. It's a, an excuse machine. And so it makes me like skeptical. Like, does this person actually have mental health issues or is she weaponizing mental health issues? Because there's no way to actually prove a lot of these things. You know, you can't really do a brain scan to see if you have fucking ADHD, at least not to my knowledge. You can't do a brain scan to see if somebody has like bipolar or, or whatever she or borderline personality disorder. Right. Um this a lot of this that like, comes from like we have to trust the person that what they're saying is honest and accurate and when you have the additional thing of like using it as an excuse but i'm not saying that she is doing that it makes you even less reputable and believable this was a person i cared about very much and was struggling so much i don't think hey, Papa, as a puerto rican i could tell you puerto rican women are not easy and crazy based <laughs> i was fully aware that i couldn't help her in no way do i mean to demonize bpd i am sure i said awfully invalidating things to andy when she needed me most and i don't mean to victimize myself i just wanted to be clear that this was a recurring struggle that affected both our lives and in turn sure. our relationship as a whole for further context sure. for example when i was showering i overheard him on a discord call with george and sapnap and i heard george say if you don't go in the shower and have sex with andy i will I yeah, I mean, I don't really see too much of an issue with that necessarily. It doesn't necessarily sound like a disrespectful thing to say. You better go fuck your girlfriend or I will. Ha ha ha. Jokingly. Okay. I was on my phone and Andy knew they could hear. And she was suggesting I should come do sexual things with her in the shower. I obviously did not. And this is when George said what he did. I did not stand okay. by when George made this comment. I immediately called him out. To further back this up. George. Don't talk about my girl like that. Andy did not hear this. I mean, if it was a friend that I lo like, I loved and respected, and they said that, I would be like, I would just take it as like a joke because they didn't mean it disrespectfully, and it could be almost to some extent flattering to my wife. Not that she'd ever want somebody else to have sex with her, but it's nice to just feel desires. So someone's like, ah, if you're not gonna go do it, I will. Under the right context, I'd be like, okay, you know, relax. But you know, okay. Comment herself as she was already in the shower. I told her what she said myself after she was done. You know, I know my wife's best gay friend has a crush on me. It makes me feel good too. So I don't care. She knows. I'm not gonna fuck him. Unless I'm drunk. Because <laughs> it didn't sit right with me. I was recovering from my eating disorder. Whenever I would crave some of these foods, he would call me fat. I feel as though the entirety of her claims of me calling her fat are heavily exaggerated and not at all how it happened. <sighs> Maybe you are fat. Maybe you should stop eating. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't. <laughs> that was a joke. Don't do that. I'm just fucking kidding. Andy did have comfort foods that we would often eat together. I have never called her fat or said she's going to gain weight from her eating habits. The most insensitive comment I ever made regarding weight, which I meant jokingly, was along the lines of, oh, Ew, you ugly bitch. Is that what he said? Oh my God, we're so fat for eating this. I okay. I've said that before too. And then guess what? I am. After a big meal, I completely understand how this could have hurt her feelings or been a trigger for her. Not really. I don't care. And I feel extremely bad that this type of stupid joke I made had hurt her. In general, whenever we would get into an argument or disagreement, he would always call me names <laughs> like annoying or weird or stupid. He would raise his voice at me if I did something he didn't like. All I'll add to this is that our relationship felt toxic and full of arguments. It does not excuse my actions, but she did as much name calling and voice raising as I did. We fought a lot. I'm not proud of the boyfriend I was to Andy, but okay, I also feel enough. the relationship was never stable or healthy for either of us. Overall, fair my enough. experience with Andy was a year plus on and off relationship with a lot of complexities, as most relationships okay. have. I am including a screenshot which is my last and only interaction with Andy since July 2022, and uh, it is one I did okay. not respond to. While I understand and she may have trauma and a negative experience from our relationship, our relationship was something that very heavily negatively impacted both of us, and in where we both hurt each other. This is the first I'm hearing of most of her claims listed here. This is like such an ununique experience to have. It's fucking crazy that this is like online drama. I, I, want, I wonder, these people are so immature, specifically the girl in this scenario. They're so immature that they think that this normal thing to be, oh, I was in a toxic relationship where we both sucked, is like fucking breaking news that anybody cares about. So it's also it's also an entitlement complex when you come forward and try to like play these games. Like you obviously don't understand. Like you're 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 not introspective. Enough. Most of the time, when there's a toxic relationship, both parties are toxic. I'm not saying every time. We know like these are these really serious situations of like absolute uh, absolute abuse where like people will beat the fuck out of their partners and it's horrible and it's terrible. But like most of the time, when you have a toxic relationship, it's not that. Most of the time, it's just two people that probably aren't bad people acting like bad people, like being pieces of shit. And part of it's because they're not congruent with each other. And things start to, when you're with somebody that you're not congruent with, things get bad. It's taken me a while to collect my thoughts and give you the best response possible. If you at least hear me out, then thank you. Regardless, I am sorry for the way I treated you and the damage I may have caused, Andy. I hope you can heal from your experiences and that you feel okay. This part, I would just be like, fuck off. <laughs> it's very clear that she has like an entitled perspective. Don't play into that. Don't be like, oh, I know you're a victim too. Shut the fuck up. I'll be like, yeah, it's toxic, but like she knows what she's doing. 
Like she knows she's doing this on purpose to like hurt me, and it's actually really annoying because she knows she was just as bad, if not worse, than me, or like or just as bad as me. That's what you should say. Like, stop giving people so much charity. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry that you went through. You didn't go through anything. This entire thing was my ex was kind of toxic, and and oh, also she lightly hinting or even saying that she was toxic too, but not getting into it. Like, who fucking cares again one day and then he attaches a screenshot of the text message he got from andy on december 18th 2022 and keep in mind according to puns he still hasn't messaged her back since five months prior to the time <sighs> when he received this text where she says i know you probably won't read this or care about anything i have to say to you because let's be for real you probably hate me justifiably so but i've been thinking about you a lot recently and hate how everything went down i know it's all my fault but i just wanted to tell you that i'm really sorry for all the things i did and said i don't expect you to respond to this and you shouldn't feel obligated to but yeah i hope <laughs> okay. you were doing okay and that you are well, she'll just claim that like i wasn't i wasn't acting like myself he had gaslit me thinking i was really the problem but i'm not a problem at all wow interesting it's interesting when somebody can it's interesting when somebody doesn't like truly admit like that they're wrong it's so interesting happy and healthy because it's what those are the, the people who are more likely to use these type of really loaded uh buzzwords like narcissist or gaslighting or any of these they typically are people who are narcissistic gaslighters <laughs> i don't think that she specifically used narcissist but like you understand what i'm talking about the, those are the people like they it's fucking crazy what you deserve and that's finally it for this one tweet except it's actually not oh, while editing this video Jesus andy Christ. made additional statements as well as puns so let's start off with what andy said in response to what puns said andy's a boy's name a loser on twitter she posted on tumblr he made a statement on twitter fucking tumblr i said i thought that thing died after they got rid of the porn just you all to read it to get his side of it all the only things i will speak on are that we remember some situations and events very differently that he's still very close friends with friends a and b as well as others who made objectifying comments about me and that the text included mm -hmm. in his statement is one I sent when I was in a state of emotional distress over something that happened with friend A and I felt okay. guilty for what I did to Luke after the relationship clear okay that did, okay great really it is not a reflection of how I feel now and to Luke I okay just because you feel differently now doesn't mean that you your feelings weren't valid then so okay You've made yourself the complete victim. I don't accept your apology because I don't think you mean it. I spoke my truth, he spoke his. That's all. Okay. Logging off. I do not need to defend myself any more than I already have, okay. so I will not be oh, making a I longer response. Up, I said all I needed to say in my original statement. I stand by everything I said. It was my truth. I was okay. vulnerable and spoke genuinely about the experiences that I endured. You can believe who you choose to believe. My response was angry because I am angry, and I have every right to not forgive him. Many things that he- You don't have to forgive him, but you don't have every right to act like a fucking asshole on the internet and pretend that you're fucking, you know, free of criticism. He included in his poster are things that we have discussed privately, so I feel no need to address the best parts coming up. What is that? Them publicly. In truth, I know that this is a he said, she said situation, and I do not want to invalidate his feelings. I think he spoke his truth, and so did I. The next day, she then there's no reason for you to be speaking this public, like this relationship drama on the internet in the first place. Keep some fucking things to yourself, guys. Holy shit. And makes a new post that says, Please excuse my initial reaction. I was quite distraught after reading his statement. Now that I've slept on the situation and have more of a clear head, I can say now that I wholeheartedly do not accept his apology for a few reasons. One, one of us clearly remembers that night in excruciating detail. I will forever wonder what actually happened that night. And that is- Who cares? You got drunk with your boyfriend and you guys had sex. I don't care. Like, I'm sorry. You didn't get drunk with a fucking stranger. You got drunk with your boyfriend and you guys had sex. You were blackout drunk on two, four and a half percent alcohol beers. I don't believe it. Or sorry, two and a half, three. Whoa. I don't like, dude, like that sucks that you don't remember. But like other people who are like, I don't remember what happened that night. It's usually when it's like some random person that finally like fucking rapes him in a bar. Like, you, this, you had sex with your boyfriend. Like, what do you think happened that would have that would change to alter the, the the fucking existence of your life moving forward? Your boyfriend, who you had a sexual relationship with, you got drunk with him and you guys had sex. Like, okay, like, I, well, how much sympathetic am I supposed to be? Don't drink that much. I, I don't. I, what do you want me to tell you? Like, it's different if it was a stranger. This is your boyfriend of like a year. Like, I, you guys regularly had sex with each other. I, I don't care. This is something that heavily weighs on me. Although the next day I accepted that he wouldn't- like I understand you could still sexually assault your partner. This is not it. She got drunk. Um, and then they had sex. <laughs> okay. Like crazy. Never hurt me. I no longer feel that way. Like was she passed out? Nothing? Like just fucking with her tongue out of her mouth, throwing up all over each other herself? Or were they just- She was drunk. According to him, he was drunk. She was drunk, but still acting like herself. Which happens with sometimes when people get blackout drunk. So like, don't do that again. If you didn't like the feeling of it, like, okay. It was a very fresh wound and I wanted to bleed. Like, I let my wife finger my asshole. Guess what? I don't, I didn't like the feeling of it. So I don't, I'm not going to do it again, but she didn't fucking violate my asshole. I did actually like it, but that's not the point. Okay. Even because I still loved him. However, after two years of sitting on this and reflecting. Like, I got really drunk one time and I said something like unintentionally insulting to some guy's girlfriend and then he fucking hit, he, he hit me. 
<laughs> it didn't hurt. I was just shocked. Whose fault is that? <gasps> but, but I was I was drunk, uh, and he wasn't as drunk as me. Like, you okay? Like, I still acted like a fucking asshole. You're still responsible for the way you act when you're drunk. It's obviously a little more complicated than that. But, like, being drunk isn't an excuse to remove complete agency from yourself. If I get drunk and I, if I'm blackout drunk and I kill somebody with a fucking car, are you going to tell me that I don't deserve to go to jail? Like, it's it's more complicated than that. There's a difference between being, like, blackout, like, legitimately, like, unable to speak, do anything behind a fucking dumpster being raped by Brock Turner, the scumbag piece of shit who should have been fucking put in jail for an extended period of time. Versus you being with your boyfriend in the closed doors, having three drinks, and then getting drunk, and then having sex, but you not remembering it, maybe, if we believe you. It's like, these are not the same scenario. Like, okay, it's not the same scenario. It's it's like we're having the right conversation incorrectly. Like, people don't understand nuance. It's, it's a bunch of kids that don't really understand anything that have these takes that they don't really, because like, they just don't get what they're talking about. They don't understand what they're saying. They're like, yeah, you know, when you're dr- like, we're talking, hey guys, consent is very complicated when you're drunk, depending on like who you're with, how drunk you are, how drunk the other person is, and the interpretation that the other person has of you and how drunk you are and your interpretation of how drunk they are, right? There's a lot of complicated moving parts. But all a lot of young people here is, you can't consent when you're drunk if you're a girl. It's like, okay, great. Like, fuck. <laughs> it's like, wow, you guys have definitely dumbed the conversation down to a fucking third grade level. Like, thank God. I take that back. And I felt like he was excusing his behavior by saying he didn't realize how drunk I was. Yeah, probably because he didn't. Also, the fact that he shared it in such detail made me extremely uncomfortable. I respect- What detail? You got you got drunk and then you had- He has to defend himself. <laughs> he, he explained it in detail. Then you shouldn't have brought it up if you didn't want- Like, you're, you're asking him to do that. You can't just say whatever you want without fucking repercussion. He wants- He's gonna defend himself. I him enough to not share such intimate details. You wanted him to send the- You came forward- If you didn't like that, he did that- then it, this is your fault. You should have come forward with this story. And he did not have the same respect for me. I think he could have okay. just said, she initiated intimacy in the way she normally did, and it would have gotten his point across well. Re- Don't care. Regardless, he still had sex with me when I was blacked out. Wh- doesn't matter. While Don't he care. was in a conscious enough state to assess and remember the encounter in such a vivid uh, detail. That-, that doesn't mean that he can, it doesn't mean that he understands that you weren't by your own logic. He, like, you can get big blackout drunk and still be, like, functioning. At least, like, like what well, depends on what your definition is. If you're talking about blackout, like, you're just laying on the ground, like, fucking, like, doing nothing, that's one thing. But it sounds like blackout drunk is you still acting like yourself, but not remembering. Two different things. I f- you have a bad relationship with alcohol, don't drink anymore. Fact has not changed, too. All the stuff about his friends is frankly of no consequence to me. Everything that happened with Friend A happened while we were broken up. And bringing up friends- It's still shitty, and you even- I'm pretty sure she admitted or that he she did it to get back at him. Um, so, okay, like, it's not really irrelevant. It shows how much of an asshole you are. And you're both assholes. Both of you are pieces of shit. You both deserved each other. You you both, at that time, deserved each other based on who you guys were. And now you've moved on, and it's time to grow. And to me, um, clearly, with you having this much of a hang-up on it means that you're probably the same person. That hasn't, like, grown up and matured. Because you can't acknowledge any like wrongdoings that you're doing in any meaningful capacity. Unnecessary, given the fact that we all discussed the matter with each other at the time it happened. I never cheated on him, and I would like to stop that theory in its tracks. Him and I have spoken about this matter privately on numerous occasions, so that is all I will say. Three, about the shower thing. I was coming out of the shower slash bathroom. He oh had the God, Discord shower. call on speaker on his phone. So yes, I heard very clearly what George said, and Luke simply ended the call. He did not call him out. I believe he's recalling okay. a different instance where another one of his friends said that he wanted to have sex with me once I moved to Florida. I- well, you guys, seem, you seem to have fucking sex with all of his friends. Friends, so I don't care. I was not witness to it, and he did tell me he stood up for me that time, which is why I didn't bring it up. Uh, okay. I did not go into more detail about it because I was just using that one quote as an example of how some of his friends would speak about me. Hey guys, we were together for a year. This one bad thing happened about when they came to their friends. Oh, so I slept with him. <laughs> okay. His presence. Okay. However, this okay. is already more than one instance of his friends speaking about me in that way, which leads me to believe it happened quite often when I was not around. Four, intentionally or not, I feel he demonized BPD and used it as a way to invalidate a lot of what I said. Five, uh, he still called okay, me a slur okay. when he knew it was wrong because. I don't care. Because I was getting canceled for it at the time. I do not believe he was actually care. confused as to the gravity of what he said to me. I w- he probably was. It's it's not. It's it's one of your more minor slurs. Okay, you still shouldn't say it, but it's a minor slur. Okay. I'd like to remind you that I know him personally. I lived through that. I when I say we remember oh things God. differently, did you die when he called you that as a joke? Did you like explode? Did you erupt? Did you die?
Did you fucking, did you die? I mean it. I think that he believes he is being truthful. However, because I know him and I know what I experienced, I do not trust him. I do I don't trust you at all. So. I do not believe that we were equally toxic. While I admit I made a lot of mistakes in the relationship, to me, they do not justify all I endured. I repeat, I you can believe what you want. This is a very nuanced situation. But if you were looking to me to accept his apology, <laughs> I do not. This is very nuanced, guys. And then right after this, Andy commented on another situation that is ongoing right now surrounding George is not found that the YouTuber Dream is defending him on to some extent. I haven't actually looked at all of it because I'm doing this video first. Then I'll do the George video after. But regardless, she posts about the situation by saying, I just want to say that George and Dream are genuinely two of the most okay. arrogant self- Yeah, the fucking, the tickle monster. The fucking, the turd tickler over here. He tickled me when we were cuddling for an hour. <laughs> and now I'm, that's rape. That's insane. That woman should be put in fucking an institution for what she said. That's insanely invalidating to actual survivors of sexual assault. Insanely invalidating. She's a fucking worthless person. Like, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm very angry about this fucking person, Kate, or whatever. She's a real piece of dog shit garbage. I don't care if people are like, oh, she had a right to feel. I don't care. It's really shitty to come on and do slam poetry about how, like, you were violently raped because somebody tickled you a little bit. It, it's something that makes me angry. Like, it's pathetic and it's disgusting. It's fucking absolutely pathetic and disgusting. I mean, it really is gross. It's a gross thing to do. Like, it's gross. Like, you don't understand what it's like to be a survivor of sexual assault. You're a nasty fucking person that wants to be a victim. So you decided that, like, so you, you want a story about how, like, that's what it is. You want a story. You want to feel like a victim because your life is easy. People who victimize themselves over shit like that and, like, I want, they want to have some kind of, they, they want to be unique, but they're boring because their lives were really good. So they decide to take on fucking, like, issues that other people have. Oh, I was raped because he tickled me after we flirted for an hour and cuddled. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. You're so gross. You're disgusting for saying that. Fuck you and your feelings. There are people who, the, the, the way that you talked about that was as if you were somebody that was like violently assaulted. It's disgusting. It's actually disgusting. Fucking tickle bandit. Oh, the tickle bandit got me. Hey, fuck you. It's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting serving and obnoxious people I ever had the displeasure of knowing. And the fact that they lack the self-awareness and backbone to own up to what they did and are complicit in should be of no surprise to anyone who knows them. My heart goes out to Caddy. She's too young and too kind to have to go through what she did and is currently facing. She is so strong and these grown-ass men deserve absolutely everything that happens to them. Fuck Caddy. The fact that you agree with her makes you a loser too. You, like, if you are somebody who agrees with that Kate person, then I, like, that then also invalidates your story to me. Because you're trying to tell me that that's comparable to your scenario. You're telling me that you were horribly traumatized by this guy, but you think that tickling is something that's going to traumatize somebody. You're stupid. Clearly, you're like you. You're lying. Like that's that, that's enough for me because you're. If you think that that's valid, then either you're virtue signaling because you don't want to get canceled, or you truly believe that. And like then I can't. How am I supposed to tell? Like take your story seriously. I was so upset. I think tickling is 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 sexual assault. Shut the fuck up. Like all this does is further like invalidate the way that you like all this is further make like make me feel like oh I'm right about this whole situation. It's gross. You're you're a nasty. You're also a nasty person, and I hope it makes you upset that if you heard that because like that's gross, man. So it's just fucking gross. Them after this. Now you may be wondering, even though Addy is posting this, why am I bringing it up in this video? It has nothing to do with the situation that has unfolded thus far. Well, that actually was the case, but then puns responded again to Andy and outed friend A as being Dream. So right after talking oh, about it was Dream, the cat boy burglar. Toxic relationship with puns. She goes out of her way to make a post against Dream, which is the guy she left puns to be with instead, which is the guy she's been flirting with before, during, and after her relationship. I'm not even mad at Katie, to be honest. I'm mad at the people around her. She that would make the situation way worse than actually was. Dude, you know, I, I I partially agree with you that her environment has an impact, but she's a she's a fucking 18 year old. She's a, enough of an adult to know not to be a, like a fucking idiot. I don't care. So we need to stop removing agency from people. Okay, she decided to play this fucking game. She wasn't traumatized. She doesn't have any like actual problem going on with this. It's a big nothing. It's stupid with puns. Anyways, puns reveals this all to us in a tweet titled, My Experience with Dream. Dream is friend A as referred to in my recent statement. This is something I never imagined would ever be brought to light. Oh, but no, Dream's a bad guy. Consequently, given recent events, I think it has to be- Dream is so fucking ugly. Like, I know I'm fat and all that, but Dream is like so ugly. Why are people attracted to this guy? I'm not- like, I, I could see it in like any other instance. I, I can see it, but like Dream? 
Like, I don't, what's, what's the draw? The fact that you're attracted to this guy is a big red flag to me. What the fuck? Yeah. The truth is that I've never been very close to Dream, and definitely kept him at arm's length in my personal life, especially after the way he betrayed me. To even consider me close or best friends with him is just untrue. I frequently go months without seeing or talking to Dream at all. That being said, I've also never spoken publicly against him, which I assume has led many people to believe that we are good friends, and that I support all of his actions, which is incredibly false. My best explanation for this is that I felt like I couldn't. Dream had these many interactions with my then girlfriend during the height of the Dream SMP. Uh. In all honesty, not only did I fear him, I felt like I owed him my life, that his generosity had given me my entire career, and that I'd be nothing without him. I viewed Dream as a mentor, felt like he was even my boss, so and that if I crossed him, I'd be isolated and lose everything. Who would choose me over Dream, publicly and amongst my friends? There would be little reason to take my side. Look Dream looks like a fucking skinwalker. He looks like somebody put skin over like an alien creature. What are you talking about? I'm not even trying to be rude to the guy. I'm just saying, like, so I don't get it. Looking back, this loyalty that kept me silent on any of Dream's actions was more cowardly than anything. I told very few people what <sighs> Dream did to me, and I spent much of these past two years wishing that even creators and friends knew the position I was in, but I didn't want it to spread, so I ultimately- It's like, he's like an uncanny Valerie character, you know, he, like, he's almost looks human, that's why he's so creepy. <laughs> I'm just fucking too, that's too him. I remember much. feeling uncomfortable around him for a majority of the time, that this was a person so many people looked up to, and I knew something awful that no one else knew. The few oh, people I confided that? in reminded me that there that were- That when he was 20, he might have flirted with a 17-year-old? Oh my god. It was not really anything I could do. I had to accept that and put a brave <laughs> face on constantly. The thing is, I tried to talk to Dream privately many times. I expressed how awful I felt and honestly <sighs> begged him to stop talking to her. His response was essentially that I was just being insecure and that he was going to do whatever he wanted. I always felt that dream. <laughs> Based dream? Based dream, dude? Dream was articulate with his words, and this made it easy for him to evade taking any accountability. I think he found it amusing that he could get under my skin. In 2021, he actually voluntarily told me that my girlfriend had messaged him before we were dating. In this Discord call, he taunted me, laughed, and refused to disclose what she had said to him. Many months later, he admitted her message was along the lines of, you should invite me to a manhunt that ends with us falling in love. He Ooh, sexy. He did to mutually flirt with her and partook in talking badly about me with her. After my final breakup with my ex, Dream told me directly that That's they were- That's true. I, I would- <laughs> I can't say that, but I would feel- very unfortunate. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to torture that information out of me. That dream almost took my girl. That's fucking crazy. Dream? Just friends. I later found out that not only was that a lie, but that the same day her and I were together romantically post breakup, she allegedly had sexual conversations with him. I'll never know the full truth of what happened between them, but I know this hurt and the betrayal has followed me for a long time. Like this would be like if somebody went and uh, like made out with a wax sculpture at a wax museum. Like I'm never going to admit that like my girlfriend fell in love with a wax sculpture over me. That that's wild, brother. That's fucking wild. Are you kidding me, dude? This whoa. Wait, are you kidding me, dude? Is this the new Toyota Tundra? Let's go with a truckload of power. Let's check out some of these options. Learn more. <laughs> Let's actually do it. <clears throat> oh, I love my car dirty. I love going into the deserts of New York. Driving around on my four-wheel drive. Getting five miles to the gallon in this puppy. Let me hear that hammy purr, baby. Tough today, tough tomorrow. With the intensity of its twin turbo engines and exceptional towing power, Tundra's ready to work hard and play even harder. Wow, beautiful. This is incredible. Look at this thing. Maximum payload, 1,940 pounds. This way you could carry your wife and her cousin back home from the pie eating contest and put your dick in both their fucking belly buttons um i don't know what that was sorry sorry go bold or go home a homegrown legacy tundra 1794 limited edition workhorse by nature powerhouse by design tundra pairs remarkably rugged Capability with premium comfort and advanced technology to fuel your wildest adventures. Power to tow and go. Tundra's available I-Force Max Hybrid powertrain generates endless opportunities for adventure with an electrifying 437 horsepower and 583 pound. I don't know what that minus F Fahrenheit of torque. I don't know what that means. Whether you're towing your trailer or taking the ATVs out to the desert, Tundra Max towing capacity of 12,000 pounds, folks. Not 1,200, 12,000 pounds. And max payload of 2,000 pounds, roughly. We'll help you hit the road with a truckload of fun. <laughs> your kids will like that pun. Send this to, send this to Toyota. Send this to Toyota. 
time. And as of now, that is about it for this entire situation, except for the original Tumblr post that Andy made, where she first started bringing up her frustrations with the relationship she had with puns in the form of calling him one, but that was in a post where she talked about four relationships she had, so a lot of it is irrelevant to what we were talking about today, and puns already- Dude, I'll totally do a fucking Toyota Tundra ad read. I'll, I don't give a shit. Quoted and hit on the most important points from that post anyway, so I feel like it would be redundant and bloated to read that, but if you really want to, I will leave a link to it in the description below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this situation in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed, but with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video. All right, that was a cool video, man. That was good. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed not having to read it myself.